Welcome back to Starting Point on TVRI World. Still with me, Siska Becker and my partner, Audrey Utoyo. And we also have two guests joining us by Zoom. We have Pak Yopi Iksan Wardana, the Secretary of the Directorate General of Multilateral Cooperation of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And also Pak Husbi Anwar, Hub Officer in United Nations Association in Indonesia. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. A very good morning to you all, too. All right. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy mornings to talk with us more about the United Nations, who is celebrating 78th anniversary today. But before we delve into our conversation, maybe we should ask our viewers to learn a little bit more about the United Nations and its history, Audrey. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that our viewers are as excited and as curious to know more about what is the UN in particular and also what is UN Day. So, a celebration and remembrance of the UN's exception in October of 1945 is known as United Nations Day. The day highlights the UN's successes while also raising awareness of its aims and aspirations. The following is a brief information about the United Nations that was established on October the 24th. Let's take a look. The United Nations Day is an occasion to remember the values that this organization stands for, including the concepts of humanity, unity and world peace. The United Nations was established to save humanity from the scourge of war and the fury of destruction. Following the two world wars and the Cold War, most notably to ensure that the human globe would never again be exposed to such instances of tragedy. Since then, the group has taken on the pledge and numerous initiatives to improve the welfare and condition of a lot of people have been made. The occasion provided by UN Day, which can be seen annually, allows us to advance our shared goals and uphold the goals and tenets of the UN Charter that have governed us for the past 78 years. Additionally, the Day commemoration aims to increase global support for the UN's many operations. To honor the UN and raise public awareness of the UN as an organization, the United Nations urges its member countries to designate the day as a national holiday. The UN was established following the Second War. On June 26, 1945, the Charter was ratified by nations. After China, France, the Soviet Union, the United Kingdom and the United States signed the UN Charter in October 1945, the UN was formally established. In 1942, while the country was at war, US President Franklin D. Roosevelt coined the phrase United Nations. So today the world observes the United Nations Day and on this special event, we will delve into the significance of the United Nations Day and explore the multifaceted role and programs of the organization in Indonesia. We are going to have a discussion with two experts who will share their thoughts, experiences, and visions for Indonesia's partnership with the United Nations. Again, joining us this morning, we have Pak Yopi Iksan Wardana, Secretary of the Directorate General of Multilateral Cooperation of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and Pak Huspi Anwar, Hub Officer in United Nations Association in Indonesia. So first of all, happy UN Day to both of you. Happy UN Day. Happy UN Day also. All right, happy let's go straight into our discussion about UN. We would love to learn more about the UN today and its significance, especially in Indonesia. Maybe, Pa Huspi, you can begin with explaining to us what is actually the significance of the United Nations Day and why is it celebrated? So uh, thank you so much, Jessica, uh, and also good morning to Audrey and Pa Yopi. So the United Nations Day should not only be perceived as an anniversary of the United Nations, meaning that we understand it as the mark of the United Nations Charter uh, has been entered into force. But it needs to be perceived as an occasion where we could, where the international communities could reflect on the UN's core principles and goals such as peace, security, human rights, and even sustainable development. And that's why through the UN days that it needs, 
we would like to encourage uh, all of the peoples, all of the community to support and engage with this, with these objectives, with these values and international norms within their own communities. And as I believe that the uh, highlight of the current uh, UN days uh, is equality, freedom, and justice for all, in which I believe also the United Nations Secretary General has already uh, delivered or conveyed his message in regards of uh, these particular points. And the significance of the UN days, once again, on how all of the communities, people, societies, and even governments could take a refl of reflections uh, on the development uh, in achieving the sustainable development goals and the common agendas adopted uh, previously. Back to you, Siska. Mm. Thank you, Pa Husby, for that very comprehensive explanation about UN Day. So, Audrey, we would love to learn more how the Ministry of Foreign Affairs have been working together with the UN as well to achieve those goals, right? Yes, indeed. And, and it's quite interesting to hear the op opinion of uh, Payopi, if you can enlighten us as well on what has been the significance of this UN Day, especially for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Audrey and Siska, and also uh, for the, uh, uh, the uh, resource person uh, just mentioned about the importance of UN Day. Uh, you, as you know that uh, UN United Nations was founded in the aftermath of the World War II, and it is among the first international organization that uh, can take action on a wide variety of issues due to its unique international uh, character and the powers vested in uh, each chapter. I think it is the epitome of hope that governments can solve conflict and problems with diplomacy and rule-based resolution rather than war. Uh, celebrating the United Nations uh, every year means a constant reminder that the UN should continue to realize its noble goals, that peace should be the only way to solve problems, that justice and prosperity should be pursued, and that uh, multilateralism should be uh, strengthened. For us, uh, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we decided that this year's uh, UN Day theme is our common future toward peace and prosperity for all. Uh, it is very relevant to Indonesia's goal to achieve what is enshrined in the 1945 uh, Constitution Preamble. This is also has become the guiding principle in which our foreign minister has underlined in many occasions on the importance of uh, strengthening our commitment to enhance our collaboration to realizing peace and prosperity for the betterment of the world. Mm. And so you mentioned about uh, the theme this year of how there's a commonality in order to reach peace and prosperity in the region, Biopi. And can you uh, explain to us more about what are some of the specific roles that the UN has brought, especially to Indonesia or the Southeast Asian region? Because we can see that the UN has been pivotal uh, in some of the government actions that has been done in the past few years. So can you please elaborate more on that? Uh, okay, thank you very much. One of the examples is uh, if we connect it to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, I think the UN uh, joint project for inclusive recovery for from COVID-19, where the UN COVID-19 response uh, and recovery fund has allocated uh, 1.7 million US dollars to protect the poor and vulnerable groups in Indonesia impacting by COVID-19. I think that is one of the most uh, important role, positive impact of the UN in Indonesia. And if you talk about the region in Southeast Asia, I, I believe that uh, ASEAN and UN has been cooperating uh, quite long. And in fact, we have established what we call joint declaration on comprehensive partnership between ASEAN and the UN and we have also a great plan of action for uh, the implementation the implementation of this uh, partnership uh, for the 2021-2025 uh, one of the objectives is uh, the two bodies agreed to continue to work together to advance the uh, complementarities between ASEAN community vision 2025 and the UN SDGs 2030 in the uh, addressing the covid-19 i think UN and ASEAN has agreed to work together to tackle health crisis and ensure that uh, socioeconomic recovery is 
inclusive, resilient, and sustainable. All right, thank you, Pahyopi, for highlighting uh, the success stories of the collaboration between Indonesia's government and the United Nations, namely the handling of the COVID-19 pandemic, which is thankfully eradicated by now. We are very mm -hmm. thankful for that, for all the good work that you've done. But now I want to go back to Pa Huspi. Now, maybe you can highlight uh, some of the UN key initiative projects in Indonesia and also how can individuals or communities in Indonesia actively participate in it and support the goals of the United Nations? All right, thank you so much. So several of the key initiatives can be um, assessed or even monitored uh, within the different uh, UN entities. As one example, if you are talking about peace, then uh, Indonesia, through the uh, as part of the ASEAN member states, uh, including with the UN women, uh, also have conducted a training, especially related to the women, peace and security, and also uh, youth, peace and security. This kind of training uh, has been part of the capacity building programs uh, coordinated by the one of the ASEAN entities and also the, uh, the UN Women Indonesia. And then, uh, furthermore, if we are talking about um, several key initiatives, I would like to highlight um, one of which, in which it is the ASIS Joint Program. So ASIS Joint Program is accelerating SDGs investment in Indonesia. As we all know that we are currently uh, more or less seven years uh, into the 2030 uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, it needs to be taken into account that every member state, including Indonesia, needs to accelerate more on how they could achieve the SDGs. Now, according to the data, Indonesia requires uh, uh, around approximately 322 billion US dollars to meet its climate targets by 2030. It's a lot of money. And that's why with these kinds of initiatives, I believe that the government of Indonesia and the United Nations could not only accelerate, accelerate but um, needs to have this kind of turbo on how they could achieve the uh, SDGs uh, 2030. Now, um, when we are talking about how then the youth could contribute, it could be in a lot of forms. Are you talking about the youths that uh, are actively participating in the CSO, community uh, social organizations, or in NGOs, in which those CSO and NGOs need to be participating in the UN activities, or even you could just join directly to the UN through any, uh, through any means. Just one example, one of the youths can do is to join as the UN volunteer. Now, if you could check one of the websites, app.unv.org, uh, many youths and many young professionals uh, or even undergraduate students could join as a UN volunteer to help and to contribute uh, the UN Indonesia to achieve it goal, its goals. And they will be assigned with a particular agencies uh, within the UN in Indonesia and also will be taxed with different projects and assigns, assignment related to the SDGs itself. Mm. And Pahuspi, from your involvement as well, we realize that you were also before the, the, one of the judges for Model UN. Surely you have worked with uh, lots of youth who have great interest and intrigue, especially in the UN. Would you say the response from the local community, especially the young generation in Indonesia, towards the UN and the realization of the Sustainable Development Goals have been of great interest in the past years? Uh, thank you so uh, thank you so much, Audrey, for the particular questions and also statements. Yes, I have been actively involved in a model United Nations. Uh, for those who did not know what is model United Nations, it is a simulation of the UN meetings. So uh, for me, I do perceive MUN as part of the uh, platform that everyone could use, not only youths coming from uh, junior high schools, but also until the uh, undergraduate students could join to participate on how the UN conducted its meeting. Now, I believe that b by joining an MUN and what I perceive as a chair, uh, I do see that we could talk about a lot of current emerging international issues. Not only that, we also try to have this kind of role as a diplomat in which we need to try to understand what is our counter stances, uh, what are the international legal basis that we need to brought upon the UN meetings and even to 
to basically understand what is each UN Council's mandate so that we could know how they resolve certain problems, how they do it, and then what kind of interest that uh, they're going to bring as a, mem uh, as a diplomat on that uh, simulations. All right, fascinating. I think a lot of people are now intrigued to pursue diplomacy. Payopi, maybe you could add a little bit more, being a diplomat yourself. How would you encourage young people, Indonesians, to pursue diplomacy and be a part of all the initiatives by the UN, especially with the UN model. That is something that they can pursue, right? To really get in touch and be familiarized with everything that is going on, the mechanisms of UN itself. What do you think, Bayopi? Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs has a program in what we call uh, public, diplomacy, public diplomacy in which one of the targets is to educate, uh, uh, disseminate on the importance of Indonesia's diplomacy at the UN to all of life, walk, walk of lives in particular young people. Uh, in fact, we at the uh, Directorate of, of Multilateral Cooperation have accept, uh, accepted a uh, request from students from universities, from universities from all Indonesia to take part uh, in an internship program at the ministry uh, throughout the year. Uh, they can learn firsthand and also uh, have been involved uh, on what we do at the UN, learn how UN works and what Indonesia has and will continue to actively uh, contribute to the achievement of our national interests through the uh, UN. Uh, as uh, I have to uh, add, uh, in fact, this year we have uh, work with universities such as Gajah Mada University, uh, Parahyangan University in organizing uh, seminars uh, on tips and tricks to join uh, UN as professional. We try to uh, increase the numbers of young uh, people uh, to join uh, UN. Uh, as you know that Indonesia uh, is considered uh, well within uh, uh, not many uh, Indonesian work as uh, uh, UN uh, professional. Uh, even in, 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 the, in the next uh, couple of uh, minutes uh, in this uh, UN day uh, celebration that, that we are organizing uh, jointly with the uh, UN, one of the session uh, is to uh, how to enter workforce at the UN. We even uh, will showcase the success story of young Indonesia who, has, uh, who have already joined UN at uh, its headquarters in, in New York. Mm. And uh, Bayopi, can you enlighten us, especially on this UN Day celebration of uh, the achievements of the UN and also Indonesia, are there any particular programs that are being done in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that are not, you know, would usually be carried out on a normal day just for UN Day at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? Uh, we have, uh, on a daily basis, uh, you know, uh, cooperate with UN on how to uh, achieve uh, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the noble uh, goals of UN, the SDGs, the climate change. Uh, in fact, uh, through UNDP, uh, we have contributed uh, numbers of uh, uh, funds uh, in organizing the uh, ICE Forum just uh, had recently in the context of the formation and the protection of marine and blue economy. So a number of projects we have initiated with the UN uh, together in Indonesia, and we hope that UN and Indonesia can continue to uh, strengthen our uh, cooperation in the context of uh, addressing the many challenges that Indonesia uh, facing. All right, great, Bayopi. How about you, Pahuspi? Maybe you can tell us more about events that are being held by United Nations representatives in Indonesia to celebrate UN Day. Maybe we can join in later on, or maybe our viewers can also participate in it. Can you uh, please tell us more about it? So I'm not sure whether it is still um, in the continuous work or not, but then uh, I, be, I do acknowledge that there is one particular pro uh, program. Uh, the main stakeholder should be the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and also the Ministry of Sports and Youth. Um, there is a program that is called uh, Indonesia UN Youth Delegate Programs. So it is a part of 
UN programs in which it's uh, several of the member states are going to uh, send a, a youth delegations to a UN high level forum. And within that particular uh, forum, uh, all of the youths that can make the, their own kind of statements and uh, policies, uh, policies recommendations on how uh, its governments and other stakeholders should uh, participate in achieving the 2030 uh, SDGs. But uh, other than that, I believe that the UN uh, in Indonesia and and also the government of Indonesia has uh, planning on how to celebrate the UN days, uh, especially on uh, providing a lot of seminars and even information or workshops uh, to disseminate this uh, information related to the working in working at the UN or even the works that are currently done by uh, the UN. Mm. And on that note as well, how can young people, especially in Indonesia, Pahuspi, learn more about the United Nations? Let's say that there are some youth who would like to be involved in the United Nations efforts around the world, especially it has lots of peace building, peacekeeping efforts. If they are here in Indonesia and parts of, of our country, how can they be more involved in the UN? All right, so if I uh, could uh, take an example from myself, then um, I myself joined as a hub officer at the United Nations Association in Indonesia, which is a non-profit organization. It is a youth-led organization, and it is somewhat coordinating with also the UN in Indonesia. By participating in any kinds of organizations, actually, uh, that has these same values or same uh, core principles with the SDGs, I believe that we could uh, already understand what is the UN is trying to achieve. Nonetheless, once again, uh, as I have already reiterated uh, previously, if you would like to participate directly or physically in, uh, within the works of the UN, then perhaps you may join the UN as part of the UN volunteer itself. But then, it is not the only way. If you would like to understand what is MUN, then there are a lot of platforms that has been provided, not only through uh, model UN simulations, but also several of the uh, initiatives that has been uh, delivered by Pak Yofi uh, previously. All right, thank you, Pak Huspi. Pak Yofi, in order to inspire our viewers more about the collaboration and strong partnership, between Indonesia and the UN, maybe you can highlight to us uh, the accomplishments from Indonesia in the United Nations. Like, what are the roles? I think we are more than just member states. We've been mm -hmm. very actively playing a big role in the United Nations, especially in the past few years, right, Bayopi? Yeah, that's correct. And uh, I'd like to uh, inform you that Indonesia has been elected as the uh, Human Rights Council member for 2024-2026, we have uh, uh, the highest votes, meaning that uh, international community countries are confident in the in the role that Indonesia is uh, uh, actively contributing in the context of the formation of the human rights at the Human Rights Council. Uh, secondly, I think, as you know, that Indonesia is one of the uh, biggest contributors of uh, peacekeeping operation. We have uh, been uh, contributing in the context of the maintaining peace and uh, st stability in many conflict areas in, in Congo uh, I since the, uh, our Independence Day. So I think uh, if you uh, list the number of Indonesia's uh, participation actively in the, in the context of uh, UN, uh, we, can, we can name, name it uh, a lot. Uh, and you also, uh, I'd like to also mention the uh, when we host the uh, UN uh, Climate Change uh, Summit back years ago, and we have uh, adopted the Bali Declaration on addre addressing the climate change, is one of the examples that Indonesia has uh, contributed uh, positively in, in, in the UN. So I think uh, this is also part of our foreign policy uh, agenda, and it's also uh, mandated by our constitution that we will continue to actively in many uh, forums. Mm. Right. That's very encouraging to hear. Congratulations.
for the appointment of Indonesia in the mm -hmm. Human Rights Council. I think we are very proud of all the good work that's been done by the uh, representative of Indonesia and the United Nations, and we hope to see even more representation of Indonesia in the United Nations. Indeed, Siska. And last question uh, to Bayopi as well as Bahuspi. Starting from Bayopi first, you've had extensive experience in the diplomacy sphere and you've known especially well about the efforts that the UN has done in Indonesia and beyond. On this uh, momentous UN Day, what are some of the hopes and wishes that you have, especially for UN and Indonesia, for the continued uh, support between both uh, nations and organizations? We hope that uh, UN in Indonesia and uh, government of Indonesia can continue uh, its positive words. We believe that through collaboration, we can achieve more in the context of uh, realizing uh, UN noble goals. And in particular, I think the uh, Indonesia's uh, effort to achieve uh, what we have been uh, mandated in the uh, uh, constitution in the context of uh, peace, uh, justice, and prosperity for Indonesian people. All right. Thank you, Payopi, for your warm remarks and congratulation notes. And now to Pahuspi, your best wishes for UN Day today. Uh, I hope that a vote of the United Nations and especially to the government of, of Indonesia could continue its commitment, not only to expand opportunities, but also to ensure justice and then um, promote more empowerment, not only towards women, girls, but also to marginalized communities, especially those who uh, needs the most. And once again, we need to bring up or emphasize on one more notion, which is to leave no one behind. Great ending note. Thank you so much, Bayopi Ihsan Wardana, Secretary of the Directorate General of Multilateral Corporations of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and Pahuspi Anwar, Hub Officer in United Nations Association. We truly appreciate you being with us today, this morning, to talk more about United Nations, its partnership with Indonesia, and to talk about the 78th anniversary of United Nations. Thank you, gentlemen. Please enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for talking with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, 